to what do you attribute what we saw yesterday from Green Bay? Well, yesterday was the head coach and the play caller almost being like a pitcher and catcher in baseball. A lot of times we watch a catcher give a signal to a pitcher and he waves it off. That was not the case. It was, this was one of those times where you watched a pitcher never wave off the catcher, meaning on the same page the whole time. They're seeing the game the same way yesterday where Matt LaFleur is making calls to, hey, I'm making this play call to get the ball out of your hand quickly. I don't want, this is not a ball that we're going to throw downfield. So he's getting it out quickly to tailbacks and quickly to uh, some tight ends. And as a quarterback, when you're operating the offense like this and it's getting out of your hand so quickly, you're telling the play caller, I'm seeing this the same way you are. And then as a play caller, you go, okay, then I feel good about taking some shots downfield with some play action pass and trusting your quarterback. This right now is perfect symphony between play caller and quarterback. Yeah, we never saw that early in the year. I mean, let's face it. Yeah. So this, we finally saw it. First game that we've seen that offense really click. And guess what? They're, you know what? They've lost one game all yes. season because mm -hmm. their Smart. defense has been there the whole year. They create turnovers. And now you talk about a message to the entire league. This is absolutely scary because if Aaron Rodgers can be the Aaron Rodgers that, that we know and, and we mentioned it. Hell, you mentioned there's no uh, Devontae Adams. Oh, your best receiver that he's not out there? You got guys that never even practiced during the week, and he's going to put up these kind of numbers? I mean, it is scary. They're running the football better than they have in recent years. Their defense certainly playing better than they have. And now Aaron Rodgers is back to being him. It's scary. As a best friend of Aaron Rodgers, uh, he and I played golf together in the Bahamas. No big deal. We won there. After the first game <laughs> against the Chicago Bears, I think whenever you saw him kind of light up with his eyes and his personality after an abysmal performance by that offense, and he said, we have a defense. You could see that something special was possibly going to start brewing there. If him and LaFleur could get on the same page, which I would argue in Dallas they did, given Aaron Jones four touchdowns there, the offense started working. Aaron started showing some trust. But I think Aaron's big thing is he kills him with indifference. He never gives anything, any answers of it with any real depth in it. All he's been talking about is how much fun they're having, how good the defense is, how well-rounded the team. The last time Aaron Rodgers was gifted a top-10 defense was in 2010. They won the Super Bowl. So now you've got hot Aaron Rodgers. You've got a great defense, good special teams. I've been saying it for a few weeks. I think the Green Bay Packers are going to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, and I think this is going to be the start of something beautiful with LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers. Aaron never had to learn a new offense until this year, so there was obviously going to be some stumbling off the blocks. What is he doing extending the uh, ball it, in his just, left hand? It completely turns the game. It's such a boneheaded play. It's not even funny. And if it was the first time he ever did that, then you might say, well, he's going to learn from it. Well, he's already done this before. This isn't the first time this has happened. But you're right, Grinny. It totally flipped momentum. Mm -hmm. And is momentum important in games? Oh, my gosh. And, and it was over. As soon as he fumbled that ball, the game was over, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a you, – you've heard, heard Bill Belichick talk – and when he teaches his players and his quarterbacks how to handle this situation, he says there's really two times that you can reach the ball out, fourth down and two-point conversion. Other than that, it's never really worth it. And a lot of guys get away with it, and this situation never, never happens until it happens yeah. to you. And so, listen, it's a bad play by Derek Carr. It's also a really stupid rule. Like, you should not get penalized. If the ball is on the 40-yard line and this happens – the ball just goes back to where the fumble happened. It should not be a turnover. Go ahead and ask me. Go ahead. Go ahead and do ask me. Do you like the rule? Rule. Of Rex, course I do. Rex it's a, it. a chance of, the, the, yeah, for you a defensive thing. But, not making a but play. I'm saying this. I mean, it is crazy, but it's been in the rule book forever. forever. And, and you know it as a player. We saw earlier the guy dives a, across to get it. Yeah, what's he got? He's got two hands on the football. Right, correct. Like, that's the thing where you, nobody makes this mistake. We see it time and time again. You've got to teach them. And for some reason, it never registered for this Final guy. thought, Pat. Go ahead. <laughs> Ball security's job security, Dan. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.